before it's too late, you'll want to take advantage of this special deal where we have large, big, big Moringa trees for you. Now shipping in the mail, what I'm going to do is take this beautiful, big mama Moringa and I'm going to trim her back to about three feet and ship them in the mail to you just like this in this box. And when you get them, you'll have a head start on your growing season. You'll be able to fast track your success because this tree is already about six months to almost a year old. It's got a really big tap root forming. It's really thick. You can actually see where I've already trimmed this tree back right here was the original cut that I made a couple months ago. It's and it regrew and thick. And so we'll cut this tree back so that way you can get your big Moringa trees. You'll want to get your big Moringa trees before it gets cold because it's going to get cold really fast. And you'll want to either get them in the ground now or get them in a pot so that way you can uh, nurture and care for her, possibly bring her inside, keep her in a greenhouse until spring, and she'll be even bigger by spring. Let's go out in the field and I'll show you how we care for the trees in the ground and how we harvest the trees. And that way we can grab the very fresh, high nutrient dense, protein packed Moringa leaves. So thanks for watching. I'm Kendrick Henry, your local USA Moringa farmer. And thank you very much for subscribing watching and even liking this video. Thanks. Let's go ahead and hop in on the hat cam. Oh yeah. Very nice. We have a few more cuts that we need to make on these trees. We're going to keep going until, until they're done. This time of year is the best time of year to just spend time in the field, grab greens every day. I'm weeding, I'm pulling back vines because we have not yet planted the grass that we want to have in the field to really help suppress our weeds. Because one of the things that I can do in the future is plant a line of napier grass or uh, what is it, bombosa or mamosa, bombosa grass or vetiver grass. I can put grasses along the edge to keep any vines from coming in and then just trimming the grasses back and putting them down on the edge is going to help suppress any weeds and vines. And so that's going to be our next step is to continually bring in plants in here that benefit from each other. We're still working our way through. We're just going to Go ahead and touch every single one of these trees over the next week or so. And since I'm here, I'm gonna go ahead and remove any of the lowers that are just yellowing. And then one fall swoop, we've got greens. Then I can also come in here and drop these sticks now, which is my favorite part about this whole operation in the field like this to suppress the weeds and bring them back. This is helping to nutrify the raised beds. And we'll clean up, we'll take anything off the middle. See how like this is coming into the middle, this is coming out. And so we'll go ahead and pull that one off. Thanks, Miss Moringa. I'm gonna go about 18 inches from the split or so. Have a nice clean cut at a 45. And loving every step of this process. Teaching has been a really great opportunity for me to, to take the knowledge that I've learned out here in the field and to share it with you. Let's go ahead and get this big one. 
Nice clean cut. A lot of people ask how much can I make from Moringa? And I guess that just depends on a few things. Especially, it depends on how many trees you have. You can plant a million trees on an acre. In this sense here, we have about a half acre plot and we have about 100 or 200 or so big trees, probably about 150 big trees. But then we have 50,000 little, little trees in this half acre. And so the, the more density that you bring and um, say like there's multiple uses just in this one row here. So we have our big orchard trees and then we also have our small inline uh, trees, the big trees. I should say we have orchard trees and then we have the trees that we're shipping for the big trees out here. These are the trees that we're shipping, the ones that are in the rows, in the middle of the rows. Those are the ones that are going in the mail. So you'll be getting yours from this, these middle rows here. I'm just gonna keep going down. I'm also looking to see where I need to go next. I need to um, come back here and just kind of cut the edges up a little bit and then pull these, these vines off, get them in the middle of the rows and then bring the, the, the mower out here and get them cut back. We're just fighting the weeds in this first real season. I feel like this is like the first real season here that I really had. I have been uh, growing here on this plot here for about two years. The first year that I was here, I just laid mulch, hundreds and hundreds of mulch piles out here. Built up the soil, and then by the second year I put things in, but then a lot of them froze. A lot of them froze back to the ground that year. And so then I didn't really even get started. Oh look, we've got a um, pigeon pea coming up, gandule. Pigeon pea is coming up. This baby fell over, so let's go ahead and get her gently. Raise back up. I'm gonna compress the mulch that's here in this area here is the last one of the last so I'll just bring this back too because that's too heavy bring that back too because that's too heavy and so now just getting that compressed there and getting her stood back up she'll recalibrate she'll re-sprout new roots in that new position because I even just felt there just now with as gentle as I was that when I pulled it up vertically I heard a little a little break and so that's what's great about Moringa is that it is so resilient and regenerative and soft that when it falls over breaks it fixes itself and it regrows. Your trees are going to regrow uh, multiple. Um, oh, I like that. That's a nice low split. Honestly, I kind of like how this one is splitting here more so than that one down there. Like I could take this piece out and keep these two and then that'll get huge. But see, down here, is susceptible to a lot of moisture and if I just keep building it up building up down here it's just going to get really big but then this glob down here is going to be susceptible to any more diseases I like it one foot at least then split so I am going to go ahead and just cut that off and then we're going to focus on bringing that out and then now bring that back, bring that back. We've got a double, double there. Do the same thing. Anything that's just kind of vertical. 
or not really serving, we're, we're making space. So the goal here is to make more space, get anything off. That's wonky. This is kind of really nice. It's going out. This one's crowding this one here. But now you can see we have a nice structured tree. Low split. And it comes out far. And she's got two here, three here. Really nice. And she's solid. She's really solid down in there. And then we'll just really grab the greens. At the same time, this is really helping me with harvesting time. The time that it takes to get these greens washed up now is, is so easy. I don't really like the big harvests where I'm bringing in a bunch from another property because my dry room is, is still small. Comparatively, I can only really do about five, five pounds a week, but I can do 10 pounds a week, but it just doesn't come out as green. I'm very, I'm very particular with the color of our product because it's indicative of the of the care and the quality and the, and the proof of the of the of the drying conditions i'll leave that like that see this is what i mean this one split really low down here so now this this down here is susceptible to rotting so i really want to clear this out from the root don't want any soil above the root and actually exposing the root can help to aerate it, dry it, dry it out. That one's nice. Let's spend some time back here. Let's take a look back here what we need to do. We got some mode <laughs> back here, but I got to get back here and really uh, mow up this back area. Let's get some of these big trees over here. We're already almost halfway full. And see how like this one comes out like that. I can trim that back there. That could potentially uh, come up a little bit like that as it continues to grow. And then take this out. We're really gonna clean clean this one up. See like that one was going in the middle there. Get that back. Get that back. Nice. Just cleaning off any of the little knobs. Last night we had a teacher's meeting at eight o'clock PM Eastern time. And our members are now teaching the courses. I've been training them up for three years. There's about 20 of them that have been really, really solid with me for three years. About 20 or 30 of the 500 members are really locking in and they're getting their operation going. They're learning how to sell. You know, they're getting their greens going. They have their supply, but also at the same time, I'm teaching them how to sell. And so they're affiliate marketing with me they're helping to get products moved on the shelf, um, getting people what they need, the high quality USA local. Oh, wow, look at that Mexican sunflower that just came up out of nowhere. It's her first, her first growth in this area here, I can tell because it just only has two splits down here. So we'll, we'll go ahead and just trim that back. Lay this down. This also, Mexican sunflower, really helps with, with weeds and nutrifying as well. So then we'll just do that. Nice. 
yeah, we're really starting to move now. You know, it's a little overwhelming <laughs> all at first. You know, you've got this whole field, but if you just every day in the summer, like I'm doing, I'm just spending 30 minutes. You guys are seeing pretty much the work that it takes with me. I, I'm making that an effort to show you, hey, you know, how much can I make? It depends on how much you harvest. If you're out here like me and you just do a few minutes every day, you're able to keep your trees producing really quickly. Don't get out of hand. You know, people say, oh, I, I've got 50 acres. Oh, I've got 100 acres. Well, just plant a 10 by 10, you know, with like a thousand. And then take those thousand and put them in your field. You know, take your time with getting to know the tree. See if your location, your, your region is going to support the trees over the course of the next couple years. Uh, the trees really do not like frost. Oh, this is nice. I'm actually going to keep that and just split this here like this. Nice. So if you harvested your trees, you know, twice a year, you could get a pound. But if you're harvesting like me, where as soon as it's stretching or as soon as it's starting to bush back out again, I'm grabbing, I'm grabbing things, then I could get, you know, two pounds, three pounds off of one two-year-old tree. And so the more that you harvest and you have a small amount of orchard trees, like a hundred orchard trees, just keep up with that. Just keep up with your first 100 really close to you. Get a feel for it. And then after say like the first year or second year, you can take all these sticks and expand your field out. Get anything off the middle like this first. Anything that's going in the aisle, just kind of low. Anything that's just kind of crowding like that is kind of like your first look. I really like things that, that come out from the center and then anything that's kind of like going vertical or not as far out or going into the middle, then I like to remove it. And then from that and this cut, nice clean cut there, this will split out here, this will split out here, this will get real bushy. And then in like a week or two weeks, we'll be able to grab all this fresh bushy greens it's like this one's vertical. This one's a little bit further out. So let's go ahead and take the one that's vertical. I mean, even this one being in the middle is not so much to my liking, but we'll just keep creeping up and going out. See how like, boom, out, cut the vertical one. This one goes out. So it's continually going further out. Same thing with this one. It's a vertical one. There's one that's coming. Look at that. That one's just hanging like that. And so I'll keep the one that's going further out, but then grab the vertical one. And then, boom. This might be it here. This is probably all the trees that we have room for today in the time. We've got to go back in. I've got to print labels. We've got about 20 orders in the queue right now that I'm printing out. Thanks so much for all of your love and support and continuation and trusting that I am getting you the best Moringa as fast as we can. And I really appreciate your patience. We're getting orders out a lot faster. I've got some help in the shop right now. Nice, like even this one is coming into this one, which will keep this one small. But if I bring this one back like that, 
a nice clean cut that gives that more room and this will get even bigger. And then we can always plant that or uh, ship that as a cutting. Let's go ahead and just get these babies in here. So tonight, if you'd like to join us for a meeting at eight o'clock, members are leading classes. We have a meeting tonight. We'd love for you to get in. I'll message the member teacher just to make sure everything's good. I've been communicating with the member teachers. If you wanna to, want to become a teacher, one of the, one of the ways to make money from Moringa in this industry is, is to know right? And to be in the know. And so learn more about nature with me, the members. I'm sure you probably have a hundred questions. And so take notes, right? Get a notebook. Uh, also order my book and highlight and take notes inside of my book. Take it, uh, take it, you know, light at first with learning. And then as you get to know more and you get more serious, you know, you don't have to take it seriously right now. You can just try to assess and figure out what, what's, what's this opportunity here. The opportunity of farming, if you think about it, all the large landowners, as much as people say, you know, farming is, is really tough and it's one of the hardest jobs and it doesn't pay a lot, I think... That's only because farmers tend to not be sellers. You know, they're busy in the field trying to harvest, harvest their, their crop. And so they might not have the time, the energy, the skill to sell, but they, they farm. And so that's what's great about our organization is that we have growers like me. And then we have people that are listening that, that, that want to grow, but maybe they're just not in the right location or occupation or health wise, they're not able to do physical labor like this. So you can learn how to educate others about this, you know, get to know it. I, I, I make things simple. I make things simple for you. So that way you can get the gist of it really help to simplify the money aspect of it and understanding the cycles of nature. Nice, we've already kind of been, been through here, got the big one here. I think that one fell over and then I stood it back up. Or... So we'll just grab one or two more off of each one of these, these ones down the aisle here. Helping to get back any weeds and grasses. Oops. Let's see, are we still good? Yeah, we're still good. Time is flying here. Out here, summer is almost gone. You know, children are back in school. Parents are just getting their routines back and we can see that people are starting to focus on their health again <laughs> and now that summer's over school's coming so what's going to happen is all the children are starting to start getting sick you know just from being around all those snotty noses oh the weeds oh the weeds Oh, the vines. Thanks for coming in, enjoying our time here together. And please comment below. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. I'm getting back to all the comments on YouTube. And uh, I'm also open here, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., Monday through Saturday. You can come and visit. Grab fresh greens. Get yourself you pick. You know, get yourself some fresh greens. Grab some big trees and also pick up some tea some oil, some seeds, some powder, some supplements, and get yourself uh, built up, you know, build your body up, get back to balance.